Hey, Ma, for a graduation gift, can we take a trip to Tanzania? I've heard it's really nice there, and they have some nice features. So what about malaria? What is that anyways? Oh, I see. Well, can't we just put up a netting to keep the mosquitoes away? What do you mean it doesn't always work? Mom, please, I promise I'll stay away from all the mosquitoes, and it will be easy. Trust me. I promise. If I feel sick at all, I'll go to the doctors right away. Well, remember all the good things I told you about? It will be cool, trust me. And what about all the people that go there to help out? They come back fine. Fine, we'll talk about it later. Imagine getting bit by the same mosquito that bit a malaria-infected person. When that mosquito bit you, it ingested a microscopic malaria parasite, which now entered your bloodstream. This parasite will travel to your liver, enter the cells there, then grow, creating many more parasites. These nasty parasites now enter your red blood cells and continue to grow even more. The toxins going into your blood will begin to make you feel sick, and all of a sudden, you also have malaria. Malaria causes a person to feel like they have the flu with symptoms of chills, muscle aches, headaches, and feeling very tired. People with more serious reactions may feel nauseous, throw up, or become jaundiced. When you become jaundiced, your skin and eyes turn yellow. When infected with malaria, symptoms may begin as early as 8 days or up to 1 year later. If the malaria is not treated the right way, it could cause kidney failure, seizures, death, or even mental confusion. To find out if you are infected, doctors will place a drop of your blood under a microscope and look for parasites. There are four major species of human malaria. Plas Plasmodium is the most dangerous. In Tanzania, over 95% of 37.4 million people are at risk of getting infected with malaria. Malaria is responsible for over one-third of deaths of children under five years old. It is also responsible for almost 2.7 million deaths per year, and these deaths are mostly in Africa. Some, outbre some outbreaks of malaria are now being reported in areas that were once thought to be under control. This may be due to climate change or people spreading diseases throughout the world. Malaria happens in over 100 countries and territories. More than 40% of the people in the world are at risk of malaria. There are several consequences of being infected with malaria. First, the disease creates, creates severe illness. Second, when infected, people do not feel well. It reduces the economic productivity. It's difficult for people to work when they do not feel well. This will then cause economic troubles. When the economy suffers, poverty begins. In fact, malaria is the major cause of poverty. Third, treatment costs are very expensive. Families lose work time because they are helping care for the sick ones and loved ones. Families of those that end in death also have funeral costs. Well, you might be thinking, what can you do to help prevent the spread of this terrible disease? Initially, if you travel to a foreign country known to encounter malaria, you should visit your doctor first. They will begin to give you specific anti-malaria anti drugs. You should follow the schedule pres prescriptive without missing any doses of your medicine. Next, try to keep the mosquitoes away by using insect repellent such as DEET on your skin and in your room where you might sleep. Next, you should wear long pants and shirts when mosquitoes are most likely to be out. If available, sleep under a mosquito bandit that has been dipped in specific antiseptic. These simple things could help prevent the spread of malaria. It is the hope that with continued research and control, and control strategies, malaria causes will decrease or even one day be eliminated altogether.